Welcome to the Maine Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. We're located here in Mechanic Falls, Maine. Our Hall of Famers go back many, many years, beginning in 1978, when the Hall of Fame was first founded by the Maine Country Music Association. Probably the most popular country performer ever to come out of the state of Maine, the one and only Dick Curlis. And Dick, of course, was famous for his number one record, Tombstone Every Mile. If you look behind me a little bit, I'll point up there on the wall, is the original cut of Tombstone Every Mile on the old Allagash Records. It's a stretch of road up north in Maine That's never, ever, ever seen a smile If they buried all the truckers Lost in them woods, there'd be a tombstone Every mile I played with Dick Curlish back in the 60s, early 60s, when we played at uh, the Thorndike Hotel in Rockland, six nights a week and it was a lot of fun. The first inductees into the Hall of Fame were, of course, Dick Curlis, and then the one and only Ken McKenzie, who was on Channel 13 television for many, many years in Portland. Here's a little something called Christmas Carols by the old Pharrell. Let's try it. They'll be singing, gonna be singing Christmas Carols. His accordion player was a young fellow by the name of Dickie Monroe. Dickie was a great accordionist and great comedian. He always would say, I'm going to sing in English, but I'm going to yodel in French. And he did a wonderful job at that. This is the one of the outfits that Ken and Simone, the missus, wore on their television show for all of those years. We also have this microphone, the speakers, those were used on the last show that was done at WGME, or in those days, WGAN, in Portland. Wonderful people in the business introduced more new acts to television in the state of Maine than almost anyone. Another very, very famous Maine country performer, the one and only Yodlin Slim Clark. Not only was he a great performer in the state of Maine, but Yodeling Slim Clark also is in the walkway of the stars in Nashville, Tennessee. Lone Pine Radio Ranch. That sign came directly from uh, Denny Bro, who was the son of Lone Pine and recognized worldwide. And Betty Cody, Betty Cody wasn't just a great lady singer, but she also was a wonderful tailor. She made all of her own outfits. My mom uh, was a uh, little French Canadian gal that spoke nothing but French when she first started singing. And they used to pop her up on a table and have her sing uh, French songs. And everybody loved it. That sort of got her, uh, got her going in the singing thing. And, uh, and then one day she ran into this tall, handsome cowboy named Hallom Pine. And uh, they fell in love. And uh, she found out she could yodel. <laughs> and uh, they went out on the road. They played everywhere. We'd drive through town in a big old Cadillac with a big speaker on it that would announce that, hey folks, tonight there's a show at the local Grange Hall. Don't miss it. Lone Pine, Betty Cody, Little Abner, Bozo the Clown, come see the show. Um, they, were, they were absolute pioneers in the state of Maine, uh, bringing that kind of music and that whole scene to Maine. And then of course there was Lenny, Lone Pine Jr. came along and he uh, added to the show as well. And mom was telling me that at the age of five, he started singing the fifth part of harmonies. Had such a great ear and started out on the mandolin and would pick uh, French Canadian uh, jigs and reels. And uh, somebody gave him the guitar, I think it was Little Abner. And uh, next thing you know, Lenny's probably one of the greatest guitar players in the world. And you can quote Chet Atkins on that one. As it turns out, Chet Atkins was my mom and dad's studio guitar player back in, uh, back in the 40s and 50s when they were recording for RCA. So Lenny started playing a lot of Chet stuff, like um, 
even though that's a um, Merle Travis song. Everybody's covered it, you know, including Lenny, huh? And then you do stuff like... That's the thing we're trying to preserve more than anything else with this organization is to try to keep alive these wonderful stories and, and the way it all came to be. We started out in the business uh, with a lot of respect and admiration for the early pioneers of country music. If you visit the Maine Country Music Hall of Fame Museum, you will see and maybe get a liking to real country, classic country music. We'd like to see the younger people, the performers and audiences, uh, having more of an appreciation of the pioneers, the people who started in this business. To raise the awareness of that and to educate people of all ages on our roots. And then to carry that on by honoring people as the Maine Country Music Hall of Fame does. It honors all kinds of country musicians, but to me, I like that they include bluegrass musicians. And there's a lot of us in here, I'm happy to say. We have a number of bluegrass people in the Hall of Fame, including people like Al Hotch, Fred Pike, Bob and Grace French, who are displayed here. And this is one of their outfits, and of course, hanging on the wall is one of Bob's banjos that he himself Produce. The Rainbow Valley Folk was the name that they went under all those years. Just backbone of country and bluegrass music here in Maine. And of course, no bluegrass program would be complete in the state of Maine without the actual fiddle that Lucky Tim Farrell played for 42 years. Just a wonderful, wonderful man and probably the greatest fiddle player ever in the state of Maine. It's part of our heritage and also, it shows people that there was a tremendous amount of talent in the state of Maine. They just do such a great job in presentation, set up. All these pictures and frames and plaques, pictures and bios right up till the present day, chronologically every single year since 1978. Slim Andrews is just a wonderful guy to give you the tour. And if you get the chance, you really want to do it. Hopefully we'll keep inducting new Hall of Fame members. We'll keep this thing going, keep it alive. That's really the whole reason for this Hall of Fame is to pay tribute to the wonderful musicians uh, of the 30s and the 40s and the 50s that brought country music to the state of Maine. That's why we're so proud to have a place to display the memorabilia of some of the finest musicians and performers in country music in the entire country. Awesome. Great. I'm gonna go on tour, you guys. Yeah, man. <laughs>